I'm just going to get the um, video started, and we'll, be, we'll get going. Once again, um, the broadcast is, is, is to be a schus for Akiva, who set everything up, um, that he should have a refuah shalayim. Akiva sent you a picture text of the verse that I said about the Rebbe. Yes, I saw that as well. So, yeah. Uh, because I texted him again and he didn't respond to me. Well, he doesn't always respond. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. He usually responds like one or two people a day, and then we have to share the information. But lately, if he came to share, he came on to Shabbos, he came Sunday, and he came yesterday. Um, he comes until nine o'clock. Um, on Monday, Shabbos, on Sunday, and Monday, he's, he, on Sunday, he sounded very good. Yesterday, he didn't sound so good. No, he's in the husband. Yeah. No, he didn't put. He didn't turn on his video just to sound. Okay, so let's see the Halakha Gemara. <clears throat> so we just we we just finished talking about where this parhedrin comes from. And the Gemara said that they used to harass the Nachtumim, and because of that, when when Rabbi Yochanan Klein Gadol made the Gzair of the Mai on the Nachtumim, they did not enforce Meiser Sheni because it was just too much. There's there's a limit to what there's a limit to what uh, a, a vendor, a, a business, can tolerate in, in, in red tape and in, in, in business difficulty, um, which is way less than what is expected of us today. Okay, so let's see the head of the Gemara fighter. The Gemara says as follows. My parhedrin, what are these parhedrin? The Gemara Porsi, which Rashi touches as Pekide Hamelach, the, uh, the uh, civil service, I guess you can call them. It says in the Torah, Yeres Hashem Toysif Yomim, Yeres Hashem adds days, Ushnois Rishoyim Tiktarna, and the years of Rishoyim will be shortened. And that's in Mishli, it's a positive in Mishli. Zog to Gemara, Yeres Hashem Toysif Yomim, Zem Mikdash Rishon. This is the base of Mikdash Rishon, Shaomid Arba Meois Veser Shonim. The, very, the first base of Mikdash stood for 410 years. Only 18 Kohanim Gedoilim worked in the, <clears throat> the base of Mikdash. Toysis, there's a long Toysis here, but Toysis says that the Revo is Goris eight Kohanim. And Toysis says that the 18 means the Skan. In other words, there was, he learns there's really nine Kohanim, and with their skan, with their second in command, with their assistant, it works out to 18. And Tosh says the reason why he includes the skan, because it's, it's, it's very possible that once on Yom Kippur, Arab soul in the Kohen, he became Tome, he lost his wife, and the sky would have stepped in, which means, in fact, that there was another, that there was another Kohen Gadol. But when the Gemara shortly lists off, the amount of Kohanim, Gedoidim, that were in the second base of Mikdash, it clearly does not include the Skan. So Toysha says, the Gemara is trying to show you an effect. Even if you count all the Skans of the first base of Mikdash, and you count no Skans in the second base of Mikdash, there were still so many more Kohanim, Gedoidim, in the second base of Mikdash than there were in the first base of Mikdash. And that's the contrast that the Gemara is making. So during the first base of Mikdash, which was 410 years, there are only 18 Kohanim Gedolim, even if you include the Skan. Ush nois Rishon Tiktsarno, Ze Mikta Sheni, that's referring to the lifespan of a Kohen during the second base of Mikdash. Sha'oma Dalad Meyos Fashim Shona. It stood 420 years. Vishim Shuboy Yoisher Mishalosh Meyos Kohanim. And there were more than 300 Kohanim. But it's not 300 Kohanim into 420 years, which would be an average of more than a year per Kohen Gadol. Rather, it's even worse than that, because in this 420 years, Shimon HaTzadik was a Kohen Gadol for 40 years, and 80 years, where Yochanan Kohen Gadol was the Kohen Gadol. Yochanan Kohen Gadol Rashi told us on top of the Ahmed was also the one who was Misakin that the Mai, you have to separate Maishas from. So 80 and 40 is 120. Then you have Eser Shashima Shishmuel Ben Pavi, which is now 130. Yud Aleph Shashima Shabbat Lashem which is 141. 420 minus 141 is, I believe, 279. 
Mikan ve'elech, say v'chashoyim kol echad ve'echad lo'hoi If there were more than 300 kohanim g'doylem, and there was only 279 years, clearly they didn't survive even for a year. It's not clear, but Tyson says that the 18 must include. Oh, and how does Tyson know that it's not including that it's not including scans? Oh, it's, it's a long Tyson. He goes through the Cheshman. It's a, it's a very long signal. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Okay, so I want to I want to show you another video from this historian Rabbi Abraham, which which he says based on our Cheshman, based on the Gomorrah's Cheshman, the average coin was less than a year, right? He, he says it's 3.2, an average of 3.2 years per coin goggle. And I don't know how he gets it. I watched it briefly. So I want to I want to watch that for a second. We have a little bit of time. It's not a, it's not a long moment. So uh, well, I want to take the two minutes to, to watch that video, if that's okay. And maybe the oil mobile to help me figure it out. So let's go over here, share. Okay. 18 Kahan and Godot. This is what I want to look at. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Jewish History and Daf Yomi. So today's Daf has a reference to 18 high priests that ruled over 410 years. Now it's important to understand, as we saw just a couple of days ago, that the Gemara is saying this as a shvach, as a, a statement of praise for how the uh, Kahuna Gedola was run back then before it was so corrupted, especially under the Romans. So as we saw in the later part of the Roman period, that is from the period of, uh, of Herod the Great. Remember, the Romans came in and took over Israel in the year 63 before the Common Era. And then uh, the, the most important king of that period was King Hurdus or Herod the Great, who ruled from 37 onward. So from his reign until the Roman-Jewish War, which broke out in the year 66 of the Common Era, that's just about 100 odd years, there were at least 28 high priests, uh, 29 if you include the one appointed by the rebels. So if you just do a little bit of math, in the earlier period, where you had 18 high priests serving over 410 years, that meant that each high priest served for an average of 23.2 years. Pretty good. That's like, you know, you get a gold watch at the end of serving 23.2 years for one boss. <laughs> But in the later period, in the Roman era, where the procurators and the governors uh, could simply sell off the, the uh, office to whoever they wanted to, the average length of service as Kohen Gadol was 3.8 years. Uh, 3.6, if you include the one that was appointed by the rebels. Okay, so you get a real sense of the contrast. And now the, the praise that the Gemara says that there are only 18 high priests over 410 years, it really makes a lot of sense in that context. Okay, I hope this illuminated your daf, and I wish you atzlacha in your learning. No, so uh, he said it's 3.6 years. Our Gemara says, but uh, he's not looking at all the other years. Yeah, he's only looking at a period of about 30 years. Uh, so that's why it makes sense. So those years, maybe the guy lasted even longer, but in most cases, it was Lahaychi The Gemara itself says not to make that kind Right. So it's, it's, it's pretty scary. Uh, he's probably a little bit of both. And his name is Dr. Henry Abramson. But the, the, I'm saying, the Gemara says, don't make his judgment. What do you mean? The Gemara says, don't take all of the years, the 410 years of Bayashi. No, he, he, no, he's not even looking at, he's only looking at a 36 year period in in the 300, in the 279. He's only looking at 30 of those years, or 35 of those years. Oh, because? That's what he, that, because that's what he's focusing on he's for his history lesson. No, because he, he's bringing down the historical information on it. That Hordes was the king. In, those, in, those, in that period, it was an average of 3.6 years. But in the rest of the periods, it might have been even less. But the average is less than a year per kind of Amar Birchlem and Torta. So who is this Birchlem and Torta? We actually have to go into the Bach who adds a shtickle Gemara. The Birchlem and Torta is a Birchlem, the son of an ox. How does one become the son of an ox? Now, in our shul, we have a rabbi ox, so you could become a big Talmud Chacham, and you could be the son of an ox. But this is referring to a story as follows. A yid sold his ox to a goy, and, and the goy worked with the ox, it was a good ox, and on Shabbos, the ox would not work. So he calls up the yid who sold him the ox, and he says, this ox should still be under warranty. I want my money back. It won't work on Shabbos. So the, 
Balabais went over to the ox and whispered into his ear something, and the ox started to work. So the question is, what are you making? Shofim? You're making Kishim? He said, no. As long as the ox worked for me, he wasn't a lot of work on Shabbos because a uh, person is Mitzvah Shushis Behemtoi. All I told the ox was, you no longer work for me. So therefore, now that you belong to a guy, you could do Molach on Shabbos. And the ox, and the ox started working. So the guy was so blown away. Madich, an ox which has which does not have its own free will, could make such a could make such a uh, take such a step not to work on Shabbos. Me, I'm a human. I have free will. Surely I have to be Mishabbat myself to the Rabbi Shalom. And he became a ger. And, 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 and his name was Rabbi Yechelen ben Tursa, Rabbi Yechelen, the son of the ox, because it was an ox that prompted that he should become a ger. The famous story in, in the East Side, where a yid had a self to root, and, um, and he got old, he retired, so he sold his horse. Yes. In the East Side, he still had horses. So yes. He sold the horse to a guy, and uh, the guy comes back to him and says, I, you got to take back your horse, because every time, 15, 10 minutes before sunset, your, the horse refuses to move on the route, and no matter how many times I whip him, uh, I can't, uh, I, I can't get him to go. So the yid understood very well that that was yeah, to daven ah. It was every day, ah. every day he daven ah. mincha fifteen minutes, before, you know, just by sunset. Mm. So I don't, he didn't whisper anything into the horse's ear, but he took the horse back. Ah. And, uh, and 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 people who heard the story said, Mada, uh, uh, fortune is the is the horse that stays with Eden. Very nice, very nice. See, I heard, I heard a different story about the sheet who's on his deathbed. He wasn't known to be a wealthy guy. He also delivered shelter. And on his deathbed, um, he called in his three children and the nurse is outside the room because it's an intimate moment. And he tells one child, Yankel, I'm leaving you those 10 buildings I have on, 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 on this street in, in Manhattan. And you, I'm le- Beryl, I'm leaving you the 10 buildings I have on that street. And then the third, I'm leaving you on that street. So the nurse comes in and she's in the spell. She tells the kids, I didn't know your father was so wealthy. He acts so humble. She said, no, he had a seltzer route. He was giving us, he was living up the seltzer route. He wasn't living up the buildings. Yeah, that was like the Mashallah. <laughs> That was like the Mashiach who said that you can't, you can, you can, you can have my building. So right. They went over to have my building. That's right. Dr. Gemara, I'm a big man. The whole kachlama. Why is it that they didn't last too long? Dr. Gemara, the Fishahayu, like an oysa bedomen. They would buy the position. Domar of Asi, talk of a dinner for three calves of a dinner. Ailele, Marse, Barbaisus, Liane, Malchus, she gave. Marsha Basbaishus gave to Yane Hamelach, Aduk will Yeshua ben Gamlo be Khahane Ravavri, so that so that Yeshua ben Gamlo would be accepted as a guy. For Amr Rabbi Yechadon ben Torta, back into the Gemara, the Nema Chor Shilai. Why was Shilai Chor? So the the Mishkan was set up first in Gilgal when they came over into Israel, and then they moved it to Shilai. In Shilai, it was actually a built building, but it didn't have a roof, and it was there for a, a, over a hundred years. It was there for a long time. I don't know the Navi properly. But it was there for a long time. Why was it Kharv? It had two problems. It had Gilu Arayas and it had Bizoin Kodshin. And at the end of Miskin Shiloi, it was Elia Koin, who was the Koin Godel towards the end. And his children <coughs> went bad. And because of that, it led to the Khorban of Miskin Shiloi. Gilu Arayas, the Chsiv, the Eli Zakan Ma'od. Eli was very old. And he heard all the misdeeds that his children were doing. The, I, my, my, when I looked it up in the Novi, it's mentioned that the Torah says, the Novi says Eli was old because Eli wouldn't have allowed it, but he was old and he didn't have control anymore. And he heard, He heard that his children would, would be sleeping with the women who would gather for the oil moid. So that's the Gilu Arayis that the Gemara is referring to that took down Mishkan Shiloh. The Alpha Gab Dom Rab Shmuel by Nachman Yomar Berichanon. Kol Oimer b'nei Eli Chatu. Eino Yalatoya. Anyone who wants to learn Pshat and the Pasuk literally, that they were Taka uh, Mizana with the women, are making a mistake. Elatoya. So why do we call them uh, that they're Mizana? To show who, as Kinehen, the Balk, they didn't rush. To be mockered, the birds that they brought. Now we learned that there were shoifers in the base of Mikdash that were called Kenan, and women who needed to bring carbonos at the end of a Leda or a Ziva, 
would put money in there, it would, it would be brought as one as a chav, as one as an oila. And it was known that once you put your money in, you know by tonight you can eat kachim because you could take it to the bank. That's the Kahanim's reason, and they will be makrib for every bit of money, they would be makrib. The problem is the Bene Eli were an exception to this rule. And they were in no rush whatsoever to, to uh, be makrib these birds. And therefore, they held women away from their husbands, and they made women wait, maybe even overnight. So therefore, and Rashi tells us, they brought these korbans so that they could eat kachim. And they didn't rush to bring their akrova. And, and I, I saw somewhere, I'm not sure if the arch crawl, or the sifter, or I don't remember, that Shadas, they want, we're going to soon see in a moment, they wanted meat. So if women were bringing carbonus, so the wealthier brought animals, there was meat involved. The poor women, they brought Vimdalu, like we learned in this week's parasha in Tazria, that uh, you know, Lettuce was poor, brings birds. They don't want to be busy with birds. There's no meat in them. They don't get anything. So they were they prioritized the carbonos that benefited them. They gave them meat, and the women who brought the poor carbonos had to wait. They wanted to wait until they would see that they were macro of them. Once they didn't anymore have faith that we can be sure that if we bring our con into the base of mikdash, they'll be taken care of that day. Now they had to wait to make sure that their carbonos got, got processed, so they couldn't even go home. They, had to, they were stuck there watching because they wanted to make sure that their carbonus would be brought. Therefore, and that's why it was considered that, that they, were, they were annoyed with that. The article brings down that their, their, uh, their sin was even less because the, the women were not even l'chuyiv to stay there. The women could have gone home. That's right. They wanted to stay because there. Because they didn't have the confidence anymore that they would be not They had to make sure. They could have thought that he was, what, what's the difference between the women are going home anyway, but they didn't. Yeah, yeah. So, come on, the When there were proper behemoths brought as karbonis, even before the emurin were brought on the mezbeach, which has to occur before the kohanim take their chalik of the meat, the, a, a, a young kohen would come to the person who brought the carbon. And he would say, give us the meat that the coin is entitled to. Give it to us now. We're not interested in cooked meat that you're going to cook and then you're going to give us our piece cooked. But we want a barbecue. Give it to us right now while it's raw. We don't want to wait. So the person who brought the carbon would respond to them. Let's wait until the Emurin are brought on the Mizbeach, and then the Kachluk Asher Tav and Abshecha, and then get into height, take your Chelik HaKahuna. Ba'omer loy, but the coin said, no, no, I don't think so. Ki ato titein, you're going to give me the meat right now. Ubeim loy, and if you don't give it to me right now, lakach li b'chazok, I will seize it. But the, and the, the Pasuk also says that they would take their pitchfork and stick it into the meat, and they would take whatever came up with the fork, often a lot more than what they were entitled to. So that caused a tremendous kitrig, and that led to the destruction of misconceiving. Now that we're talking about destruction, let's discuss about the Beis Hamikdash Arisha and why it was hard. Because of three things that three avarys that occurred there. Avoid the Zara. Avoid Let's see the pasuk inside. The, the the mattress was no longer big enough to accommodate. He cuts her hamatza The mattress is no longer big enough to 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 lie on. And your cover wasn't big enough. You couldn't even cuddle up under the cover. The cover wasn't big enough to cover you over. So we dash in this pasuk as follows. My katsar matzah misteraya. What does it mean that the, the, the bed's not big enough? Amar b'yoichanon katsar matzah zeh may star love shnei reim kechod. The base of mikdash klai yisrael 
became too small to accommodate both the Rebbeinu Shalolim and the Avoid Zorah, because Klai Yisrael were were um, were were, do, were doing Avoid Zorah, so making a Kaddish Baruch have to share Kavayocho their attention. So that's why that's that, that's what the first half of the passage is. Whenever Abionison would run into this passage, he would cry. Omar he would say, Man, the head of the it says, but the Rabbanishlam coinage can aid me a yum. He could pile up all the water of the whole world into, into a pile. He's 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 a Could could you possibly imagine how a getchka, an idol, could become a tsara to the Rabbani Shlom that Hashem has to share the relationship? How you talking? Gilu Arais, where do you see Gilu Arais in the first place? Amiktosh, the Chesiv Ayomer says, Yeah, but Yemer Hashem, Yah and Vibal, he gavu benoist tzion betelachnen to his garden. The the benoist tzion became haughty. And they walked with their head up high, and winking with their eyes to attract. Um, they look like they're sort of floating, which was a very um, attractive type of uh, type of uh, way of walking. And they made uh, um, they made me upset with their feet. So the Gemara Dyson is what they did. A tall woman would purposely walk beside a short woman so her appearance should stand out. But they lachna, and the, the, the Methodist tells us that a lot of these women were even married women. If they weren't married women, so we, we find that the, the single woman is supposed to attract a mate, but these were married women. But they lachna the two years garden and they walked with their head up high. Once again, that's something that attracts too much attention. They put on too much eye makeup, which once again is very, is very catches the eye. They walk like they were floating. They would walk with one foot directly in front of the other foot, which, which once again attracts attention. With their feet, they make me angry. They would take different spices and put them inside their shoes. When they would come near Bachrim, they would kick, which would crush their spices and, and, and shoot them out as a projectile. And that would cause and that would put a poison into, uh, into it would put a, it would, it would be Megar on these boys like the poison of an angry snake, which would mean it would inject it right in, and that caused, that led, of course, to terrible things. Innocent blood was spilled by Menashe Harbi Moed so much, that literally it was wall-to-wall -wall murderers, and the Mephorshim tell us that he was an inspiration, if you could call it that, to others to also engage in Ritzicha, and that's why it was it wasn't just Menashe, but rather all of Clarisol was 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 falling to victim to this terrible affair. Zokta Gomorrah, Avo Mikta Sheni, Shahayu Oiskim Betoyra. I believe the R scroll brings down from our Aaron Cutler, uh, Kasha from the Mishnah of Aaron, who asks, it says in the Dorim that the reason why Besam Mikta Shrisha was Khorv is Shalai Burhu Batarat Khila. So what is it? So Rabbi Aaron says that if Borchu Torah means we don't perceive the Torah to be merely a, a, a subject to study, rather it's Ki Yuchayecha, Yemecha. If Kalayishul had regarded Torah at such a level that it's our, it's, our, it's, our, it's, our, it's our literal lifeline, can't survive without it, then even though they had all these affairs, that would have been a redeeming factor. I believe that's what the Arshbrook says in the name of the Mishnah of Aaron. And, and I think he also says that it not only would be a redeeming factor, if someone realizes that Torah is so important and connects to Torah, it's, it's likely that other various would be reversed because they'll come to the MS through the Yigi and Torah. 
They were a pretty good group. They were doing good things. Why was it chor? And the article goes on a long stickle about what sinas chinam is. Because he says, what do you mean? If, if you hate somebody, you, if, I, if, if I have a problem with somebody, and someone asks me, why I have a problem with him? I won't say there's no reason. I'll say, oh, he did this, he did that, he did that. Right? So what does it mean sinas chinam? So the article explains um, that Talmud al-Khamim worked hard, they were Oshuk and and because of that, they were Talmud al-Khamim. Then they were Amaratsam who didn't. But Lemais had bothered them that they weren't Talmud al And that created a hatred of those that did exert the effort to become Talmud al And because of that, there was an anger. I once heard by a Dirshu, not by a Dirshu, by a um, Lev Laachim, no, not Lev Laachim, by a Achenu, by an Achenu parliament meeting where, where Pesach Krohn spoke, he said over a story from Absalom Shvadron. And the story that I said over was there was once a, a demonstration in Israel and a Taimani police officer was, was beating a Yerushalmi. And as he was beating him, he, the Yerushalmi said, why are you hitting me? Why are you beating me? You're like, we're both Jews. He says, I'm beating you because where were you? Now you're fighting and screaming against Chil Shabbos and you're fighting and screaming and, 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 and protesting against, against something that's violating Yiddishkeit. But when we were brought in on Operation Magic Carpet, when we were brought into Israel and we were we were stripped of our Yiddishkeit, where were you then? We're not, now you're a Gleisha Knacker? Where were you then? You abandoned us. And that's where our hatred comes from. That's a, that's what um, that's what Pesach Kron said over at. That was a little bit of, it was a little bit of a like a awe-inspiring type of moment that they're upset that we were left out. We also want Yiddishkeit. Sometimes we look at non from people like they don't care, but for all you know, they're looking at us with envy and maybe even with a tiny, why aren't you bringing me in? So tomorrow, Lelamdecha, Akiva, I said that for you. Lelamdecha, to teach you. Shishkula shinas chinam keneged sholar shaveris. Shinas chinam, which was the only aver that took down the second base of Mikdash, had the same power to destroy, to destroy the second base of Mikdash, which, which, which the first base of Mikdash was destroyed because of Avodah Zorah, Yulai Reis, and Shri Chastamim. And the Arshul also brings down the whole stick of the Chavetz Chaim, that Sinas Chinam also means sometimes you get along with people, right? But you say Lashnar about somebody. That's the Sinas Chinam that it's talking about. And, and that's why we don't have to be smith with today, is what the Chavetz Chaim writes. Dr. Gemara, Rishoyim Hayu. Now, I don't know yet what this is talking about, but they were Rishoyim. El Shetalu B'Tchaynim B'Kadosh Baruch even though they were showing, they still believe that it was the Brunish Lanim who they have to rely upon. So who is this referring to? Also on the Mikdash Rishon. It's referring to the people during the base of Mikdash Rishon. Their heads, when they did judgment, they accepted bribes. The and the Kayhanim Paskin with a little bit of a bonus at the side. And the Viyah Bekesev Yiksaymu. So, but even though they were doing all these averes, they still said, "Well, Hashem should not be shut off." Leimar halay Hashem bekerbenu the rabbanim shalom is mitums leisavaya leinu ra. Lafichach therefore hevi alayin hakadosh baruch hu gimokzer. So that's goes. But that's a little weiter. So what the Gemara is saying here is, they weren't. They weren't. Although they were bad, but lemaisa lemaisa they still relied on the on the rabbanim shalom. Although it, it, it didn't help because of their averes. So Dr. Mar Lafik Hevilin Kazrok Gil of Zeris, Kinegad Gimla Ver Shabyodan, Shinemar Lachain, therefore, the Glachan Nebach Sion Sadate Kharish, Sion will be plowed like a field, you shalim ainti, your shalim will become desolate, the Harabais Lubomai Shar, and Harabais will be like a like a a, a a forest on a plateau. Well the Miklish Rishine Frank Gamar, like Hava Basin is Khinam, was everything so hunky dory by Miklish Rishine that you that you don't attribute part of the the, the, the friends had 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 swords amongst them. Therefore, we should clap our our, our, our thighs, meaning in, in mourning. What is this referring to? We're talking about people who sit and party together, they eat kiddush together, they're celebrating together, everything's hunky dory. They'll give their friend. They can they can be friendly, but sometimes you're friendly with somebody and 
So that was also the Avla. So the Gemara, that Sinus Chinam wasn't amongst the population. That was only by the nobility. Therefore, the Mesonikish wouldn't be horror for it because the population did not engage in this type of behavior. Cry and, and mourn with the Adam because this was in my was in my um in my nation. So that's that's the part of the same pasuk that we quoted before. Let me just read it over here. It says, um, "Zak v'hilal ben Adam ki hoisa ba'ami." This this existed in my nation, and then it says, "He bechol nesi Yisrael by the nesiim by the leaders mugure alcher of hoyu asami lachen tzvay kol yare." The Tanya it says. Zak will be Adam, Yochal Lachol. You might think everybody was engaged in this. Tamad Loimar, he bechol Nasi Yisrael. This problem only was amongst the nobility. Abriachal Rabblazad Amitavayu, Rishonim Shinis Skala Avoinam. In the first place, Amikdash, where there are various, where public Niskala Kitsam. They were Zoycha to know that their Golas would last a mere, a mere, the last 70 years. Achroinim, Shalom Niskala Avoinam. I guess sinaschinim is something that's more clandestine. Learn this kalakitzim. They were in zoycha to know when the geula was going to come, and the the harsh told masber that when something's public, a it's more likely that you could do chuba on it. If if the averes are noticeable, then you could do chuba on them. The other pshat they say is why does a ganav pay kefel and not a goslin? Because a ganav is afraid of afraid of man, but not afraid of the rabbis. So therefore, he gets punished more. Am Rabbi Yochanan, Toivot Ziparnin Shalosham, the little toenail of the Friedike uh, from the first base of Mikdash is greater than the Chreisim Shalachronim, even than the big fat belly of the Achronim. We don't come close to the value of the Friedike. Am Rish Lakish Adarabe, why would you say that? Achronim Adifi. If anything, us in our generation, we're greater than previous generations. Why? Afal Gav Dikashibut Malchiyos. We're no longer independent. We are under the thumb. Of harsh rulers, nevertheless, ka'oski b'toyer. So, if anything, we deserve great credit. Omer Lay, he said, "Well, you might have a good svara, but the the, the facts prove otherwise." Omer Lay, bir techiach. The Beis Hamikdash will prove that they're better than us. Shechazur l'rishoyim. They were after seventy years. It came back, but for the chazur l'achroyim, it didn't come back to us. And it says, "Kol misha l'adiv the Beis Hamikdash b'yamav." Had the Beis Hamikdash been standing, it would have been destroyed. So obviously we're not as good as they were. Shalus Rabalazar. They asked Rabalazar, we shine him gidoilum, oh yeah, him gidoilum. Who are greater? Omar Lahem, Tanu and Nechem Bibira. Look at the base of Mikdash. Do we have it? Obviously, we're not as great. Ikadamri, Omar Lem, a dechem bibira. Not your not 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 a nechem look, but Adus. The Adus, the Bureau say testimony that they got the base of Mikdash back and Loyal Lena, we don't have it. Rishlokish have a sachibi yard. Now, this is an unbelievable story. Rishlokish was bathing in the yard. Also, Rabbi Barbarchana, he's a he's an Amora who's mentioned in the Gemara. We know he, we can't even imagine the, his godless. And Yov Yoda, he wanted to give, extend his hand to help Rishlokish climb out of the river. Omer he said, and there's there, I saw two different ways to read this next phrase. Either Elakas Nidalhu, the Rabban Shlom hates you, or Elaka, he's making a Shvua, Saninalhu. That I hate you. The chsiv, why do I hate you? The chsiv, it says in the pasuk, im choymehi nivna le tiras kesef. If it's a wall, then we'll put on some some uh, some uh, trim of silver. But from delicacy, if it's just a door, then nitzara la luch eres. They will only put on it um, some some cedar wood. What does that mean? Masizim atz mechem kechoyma. If you would have made yourself like a wall, totally sealed. And permanent, and you would have all returned to Yerushalayim after the seven years, like in the time of Ezra. Then nimshaltam kekesef. Then you would be compared to, to, to silver. Silver does not rot, but achshav shalisim kedalsois nimshalta kedalsois. Now that you came up like doors, meaning one door is open, one door is closed, meaning you didn't all come back. Some of you didn't come back. So in the Shaltom Ke'eres, you're more like cedar wood. Sharek of Shoilet Boy. It rots. My Eris, Omer Ula, Sasmagur. It's the rot from this worm. My Sasmagur, Omer Abba, Basquil. What 
what was the rot that we have in the second base of Mikdash, the hollowing out of the inside that's hollowed out by the swarm, what does that mean? How does how does that translate to the reality on the ground in the second base of Mikdash? That we no longer had Navua, we only had Baskoya. So before we go weiter, I want to point out something very, very fascinating that Mamish blew my mind. The art scroll, the art scroll brings down the story that in Kinnis on Tishabov, in the very first Kinnah, meet in Roshimayim, we were mourning the, the destruction of, of the Kahilis and the Rhineland, Worm, Speyer, and Mines. Because during the first crusade, they were totally destroyed. And the art scroll writes that this community started after the first base of Mikdash. When the first base of Mikdash was destroyed, Yidin moved as far as Germany. And they enjoyed great prosperity and respect by the local Goyim. And after the 70 years, when the, when, when the Yidin sent to them, come back to Yerushalayim, where we all belong, the, the word that he quotes, you stay where you are in the great Jerusalem, and we will continue to stay where we are in our little Jerusalem. So the article quotes, this arrogant response was due to the prosperity and prestige the Jews of Worms enjoyed in the eyes of the local Gentiles and their princes. He brings it down from Seder Adairis. And then he writes, the comfort of the Jews of Worms experience in their patch of exile was ultimately replaced with cruelty and violence. So why is this very poignant? Because I want to read to you the Yurtzites of today. And this mamish blew my mind. This mamish blew my mind. So today is Ches Iyar. Today is the Jewish community of Speyer, the Rhineland, Germany, was massacred on Shabbos, Ches Iyar, during the First Crusade. On Tisha B'av, we recite the Kinnah of Meiti Roshimayim in commemoration of this community. So in the 1070s, the Muslims took over. And then in 1096, the crusade started. The next year, more than 100,000 men rallied to his call, forming the first crusade. Urban and local clergymen in Europe felt that the crusades had another purpose as well, to annihilate all non-Christians in Europe who refused to convert. On the way to the Holy Land, the mobs of crusaders attacked many Jewish communities. On Shabbos, Chesir, the Jews of Speyer were massacred. Many of the Jews of Worms, Germany, were also massacred on this day. Some of them took refuge in local castles for a week before being slaughtered as they recited Shachas. So this is Mamish chilling that the day that we're learning this Gemara um, is the, the, talking about people refusing to come back is, is the yard site of the day that the community suffered. The Rebunsha should accept all of our suffering uh, as a kapara and the Rebunsha bring us back already um, with bracha and simcha and, 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 and the neshamas of all those kedoshim should have an aliyah. Okay, let's see the Gemara Vaita. Affect the Gemara Rishlokish, Mimistoi, the Hade, Rabbi Barbachana. Would Rishlokish even talk? The Rabbi Barbachana? Zok to Gemara, Umar Rabbalozer, Madach Rabbalozer, the Mori the Arad Yisrael Abba. He was the master in Torah of Eretz Yisrael. Will have a Mishtoi Rishlokish Bade. Rishlokish wouldn't be caught talking to him. Why is that? The Mond Mishtoi Rishlokish Bade Bishuk, any person. Who was caught speaking to Rish Lakish, that was such a sign of honesty that that anyone would do business with such a person without any witnesses. So Bahadi he wouldn't talk to Rabbi Lazar, he'll talk to Rabbi Barakana. So this in no way is putting down Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Barakana. So he brings down that Rish Lakish used to be a gangster. So he had associates, he's a, he was associated with a very bad group. Because of that, when he, when he became uh, firm, became Sherman Torah Mitzvah, he totally pulled away from anybody and he was very, very careful with who he had to do it. Now, although he spoke to everybody in private, in public, he wouldn't speak to somebody unless that person was beyond and godless. So Frank Gamar, this story cannot be accurate because Rish Lakish wouldn't have been uh, talking with Rabbi Barbachana. So my Papa, Shoji Gavra Benari, you need to change one of the two people mentioned in the story. Oirish Lokish, Hava Uzairi. Either Rish Lokish was bathing and it was not Rabbi Barbachana, rather it was Zairi who pulled him out. Oi Rabbi Barbachana Hava, Rabbi Lazar. Or the person bathing was Rabbi Barbachana and the person helping out was Rabbi Lazar. 
but it for sure was not Rishlokish in Rabbi Bechava. He also came to Rabbi Yechanan. When he came to Rabbi Yechanan, Amr he told him, Lav Hainu Taima is the reason, is the reason why the Beis HaMikdash Sheni didn't have the full Kedusha. And that's why it was missing the Baska, it was missing the Uluvua. It only had Baska. Is the reason because not all of Klai Yisrael went back? Even if everybody would have went back and all of Klai Yisrael would have gathered back in Yerushalayim, Still, I have a shoyer shchina b'mikdash sheni. Still, there wouldn't have been a shoyer shchina properly in the second base of mikdash. The chsiv yaft elakim le yefes. Hashem made it beautiful for yefes, but the yishkoin b'alei shem. Where is Hashem going to live and rest? The shchina will rest only b'alei shem. Afal gav yaft elakim le yefes. Even though Hakadosh Baruch Hu makes it beautiful for the yefes, like Rashi just says, "Zachu parasim livnos b'alei sheni." The Persians were zayichet to build the second base of mikdash. Nevertheless, in a shechina shayra ela ba'al eishen, ein shechina shayra ela b'mikdash rishon shabon shloima shaba mizari shloshin. Sure, Hakadosh Baruch gave them a huge advantage that they were able to build the base of mikdash or assist in building the base of mikdash. But the shechina was not shayra there; it was only shayra in the base of mikdash built by Ayid. And just to just to talk a little bit about the difference between um, bas koil and and nuvua. I, I read an, uh, the introduction of the art scroll to to Nevi'im, to Yeshua. is a fascinating read. I recommend everybody read it. And he explains what is Nevoa and what is Ruach HaKodesh and what is a Basra. The, the introduction to Yeshua in the art scroll, Nach. And he says that Nevoa was, was not something that, that Hashem gave to specific individuals. Nevoa is was part of the nature of the land, meaning the more Nisala a person became, the more removed he was from Gashmis, automatically his Neshama connects more to Ruchnius, so he was connected. You know, there, there were thousands and thousands of Nevi'im. The only Nevi'is that we have that are recorded are things that are relative to us, Ladayas. But Nevi'im knew if you lost your donkey somewhere, they knew where it was. They, they saw me, me soy for them, but soy for them. That wasn't, that wasn't, that was a natural part of how the world is built. When, you, when a person becomes um, less Nugoshimi automatically connected, that was Nuhua. Now we had that, but Zelu Umazah, we had the Yitzhahara for Abu Zara, which balances it out, which means we still have our Bechira. But once, once the, 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 they were Poyalois, once the Anchek Nesak were Poyalois, that we shouldn't have the Yitzhahara of Abu Zara anymore, well then it wouldn't be balanced. So Zelu Umazah, the Rabbi took away that level of Nuhua where you mamish have a direct connection, but we have Ruach HaKodesh, we have Basco, we still have connections. And he says, you find that people who are totally uh, removed from Gashmias, they're Mavatar and they're Mavatar and they're Midas, and they're Shadda and they're Tzahara, so they automatically create a connection, and that gives them a certain insight. You know, we always go to Gedolim to, to get Das Torah. What is this Das Torah? So I think the way the Arshko explains it is, is as a person becomes less Mugushim, they, they get a certain clarity, they, they get a certain insight. Uh, it's 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 sent to them a certain wisdom, chachma that's almost like nevuah because they're able to have an insight as to what will be the results of certain actions and and what the best route to take. That all comes from that same Indian of scarvis to to shemaim. So uh, we, we, the Rambam says we should all be zayicha. We should all be zayicha. The car of mamish. Okay, I guess we can stop here. Yes, you with that. Have a wonderful day. the <laughs> Right? It was the other people, the common people in the land that were talking. They went even further. They went even further. So because they, they like bear some of the responsibility. Right? So they, they bear some of the responsibility. Right. Because they bore responsibility, because they bore responsibility, that's how the Torah is able to say that they were actually the most of the people. That's what we call The minister in, in Pogba is the Mahalai Shabbos. And what's the many of you Why is it so valuable? Valuable because on on the on, on the base 
he says something very strange. On the other day, it says, Ahi, where, where was it? Um, Ahi the Messiah Yisrael. This was only among the princes of the B'nai Yisrael, right? The fact that- Ah, so why didn't that, no, but so why on. didn't that carry through? No, no, there it didn't, there it carry, it, the, the, by the murder, by the murder, it carried through by Menashe. Right. But so, by the but but by the uh, stalking, you didn't. Right, they didn't. So the reason, the but 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 because we say because the 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 Hakim and the Siri Yisrael it was only by them and it did not carry through. But by Chofni and Pinchas, even though they're the Nesia Yisrael, there it also was the Bnei also was the Bnei Yisrael. That's why it was hard. That's why Sheila was hard. The question is, why was she the hard? Right. You're telling me because of Chofni and Pinchas, but Chofni and Pinchas would have been the Nesia Yisrael. Maybe I also explain that no, even though there was a Messiah, so nice. it carries through to the. Did you see 